Good morning, Caroline. Good morning. Uh, and Hello. good afternoon, delegates for European colleagues. Um, look, I'm going to just quickly outline um, four critical things that we're involved with as a department in terms of place based uh, investment. Um, it's going to be a very quick elevator uh, presentation of four parts. Um, and I suppose I won't unpack everything in detail, but there will be detail will be available on the handouts and slides that I'm going to show you. So I suppose just the first one of the four first things I'm going to mention is context. Then I'll mention the word vision, then enabling and then application. So in terms of context and for everybody involved uh, in this format of workshop, uh, possibly the most critical end need is obviously sustainability. And obviously we're all conscious of that in terms of all the issues we're dealing with in terms of resource management. Second thing is, from a global or a European perspective, we are all challenged with the same um, opportunities um, in terms of territorial planning, um, in terms of urban development, a place based investment. And obviously we're very familiar with the sort of uh, policies emerging from Europe, such as the territorial agenda and the Leipzig Charter, which is all about integrating territorial and urban dimensions. So in terms of vision, at home in Ireland, how do we deal with that macro plan? Well, quite simply, we have uh, two sister policies, uh, one the National Planning Framework and the second the, Nas the National Development Plan, and they are very much dovetail in their ambition to make investments in Ireland over uh, a period 2040. Um, and they are indeed our, our guiding principles in terms of capital investment, but also a spatial strategy for Ireland as we as we uh, plan out to 2040 and, and what all that entails. Supported by that are 10 national strategic outcomes and obviously uh, they, they approach investment and, and our spatial plan in an integrated and holistic way and obviously NSO 7 um, very much speaks to today's conference about enhanced amenity and heritage but also building on our existing asset base uh, in terms of attractiveness and investing in place in Ireland. Um, I'm responsible for urban policy and regeneration and so obviously on NSO 1 compact roads that's that's mainly my focus in terms of um, advising on aspects of the urban regeneration and development fund. So I suppose the key thing here is it's no longer business as usual. Uh, we do have to look at a more integrated way of investing in our places. And we have a large stable of existing guidance and suite of supports that actually support that idea of best best practice and place making. So in terms of enabling, well, I suppose the biggest enabler we've been able to um, activate in the last two years has been um, the four NDP funds, the Catalyst funds. Uh, so we're directly involved in the Urban Regeneration and Development Fund. Uh, which really has been described as a game changer and, and I think really has been in terms of leveraging investment in place, but also acting as the glue uh, for that catalyst at a local level. Uh, so typically we invest in projects that um, fall outside routine capital investment, but actually uh, stimulate that level of compact urban growth in, in cities and the regional drivers. So at the moment we've invested in over 132 projects through two different calls. Uh, and for us, it's about the right project in the right place. So interestingly, when you look at the typologies of investment, the salmon colour and the brown colour um, are very much about public realm and integrated urban development. So they have to work in tangent. But also if you look at the other colours in terms of cultural, community, um, strategic investment, they have to be part, part of that story as well. So they all have to work in unison to make that sort of level of impact at a local level. And as an example, uh, some of you may be very familiar with uh, if you take Limerick City, we're investing in a broad strategy uh, in terms of their waterfront, but also recognizing the internal core of Limerick City as a Georgian core. So it is very much about uh, livable compactness. So you focus on the large capital assets of, of a city, but you also look at the adaptation opportunities through uh, existing properties in what is you know, a, a core with a very high current vacancy dereliction rate. And I think that will be one of the, the critical um, enablers in Limerick City. 
and that's borne out by investment in the public realm and activating some of the uh, issues that you may have heard about earlier. Similarly in Waterford City, it's about investing in the cultural quarter and the Viking Triangle, but also investigating the retail spine and how they work in tandem as a coordinated entity effectively in the city. And I suppose Waterford has always invested in the design strategy of the place, most notably by the upper market uh, intervention, the, uh, the, the large canopy, which I think in itself uh, is a great showcase in terms of demonstrators that we that we would like to support. Places like Sligo that have a very good public realm strategy in terms of investing in their public realm uh, through cultural spaces and interconnectivity in the town. So that's a, that's a great example of a town population size of 20,000, but an all inclusive approach to enabling their place. And indeed, similarly in places like Dundalk, uh, in Loud, the long walk, long walk quarter regeneration, which addresses not only green infrastructure, but how that talks to the retail spine and the public promenade in, in the town. And finally, in, in terms of uh, examples, uh, two towns, um, one Carrigan Shannon, the other one Balbriggan, um, which effectively take a very coordinated approach to cap to public realm investment, which inevitably will change the, the face and look of the place but also create confidence in terms of the knock on effects, both economically and socially and from a, a capital investment point of view. So finally, um, I suppose just to add in terms of application. So what have we learned from this entire process? Um, well, we're obviously feeding it directly into the town centres first um, uh, policy that we're working on that we hope to bring to government in June. Uh, so we are co-chairing an interdepartmental group with DRCD, the Department of Rural and Community Development. And so really at the heart of this, uh, you know, uh, enabling process it has to be about taking the best of the USPs of all our towns, which are various sizes and, and shapes, um, and looking at a cumulative approach or a toolkit to actually enhance and enable these places. And so finally, in conclusion, um, I suppose the four key ingredients for us, whether it's the macro capital investment at an urban region level or a town level, the vision factor is essential. Um, you have to have a champion at a local level uh, through the local authority uh, or a combination of a number of players. Um, the economic or business case or the strategy for the place in terms of its future viability is very, very important. Quite often we look backwards towards the lamenting of loss of, of function but actually there are future function opportunities um, that are very, very important and we should enable. And then obviously this won't happen unless we have a very clear deliver deliverability plan in terms of enabling these places. So I think Caroline, I'm probably under time on that, so I'll conclude on, on, on that basis. Thank you.